According to legend, around 1430, a monk named Isidore from Chadov Monastery inside the Moscow Kremlin made a recipe of the first Russian vodka. So the Russians did invent vodka. The Russians vodka. invented vodka. This is the only one that's from Russia. So we're getting that to go with our theme of our soap that Aaron wanted to do. Still this, yeah. This is grown it. The wheat is grown in Russia, but it's actually distilled. Dis in Litvia. Distilled, yeah. In Litvia. Yeah. Disclaimer: Neither Aaron or I drink alcohol, but this is a a themed soap based off what Aaron? It's based off of one of my favorite some movies. Russian literature, right? Well, it's really the whole Russian mythology because I actually like the movie more than the book. But the movie wouldn't exist if it wasn't for the book. And the book is called Roadside Picnic, okay. which was uh, written. Can I smell it? That smells like a disinfectant. That's <laughs> what that smells like. It smells just like the alcohol that you put on a, a cut. Weird. That's strong. That's what stuff. people drink. <laughs> yeah. That smells yeah. just like something from a hospital. If you were to drink this, if I drunk this stuff, it would kill me. I feel like it would. This would I feel like I would need to pump your stomach after you drink yeah, it. <laughs> you would have to pump me my stomach. I'd be in the toilet throwing up. This is strong stuff. I don't know how the Russians do it. They come out of the womb drinking it probably. So Roadside Picnic is a Russian science fiction novel that was written by the Strakotsky brothers and then it was adapted into a film by my favorite Russian director, uh, Andrei Tarkovsky. I kind of want to taste it. You can taste it. I'll let you. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> That's seriously like drinking that stuff that you put on a cut. Yuck. Wow. Wanna pour that in, Aaron? Yep. So I just had my first experience tasting vodka. Wow. That tastes just like rubbing alcohol. I forget what my sentence was. Oh, I guess if you were growing up in the USSR, then... I guess if oh. it's normal. If it's normal. But in America, that smells just like saline solution that for cleansing and for... See, I've, I, have, I haven't drank, but I have put hydrogen peroxide in my mouth. And honestly, I think hydrogen peroxide tastes better than rubbing alcohol. <laughs> That's exactly what vodka tastes like is rubbing alcohol. I've never yeah. put rubbing alcohol in my mouth. <laughs> Well, if you were to snort rubbing alcohol, yes. that's what that tastes like. Hmm. So we're going to boil this, because I'm assuming you should boil out the alcohol. This is a new experience. There aren't many examples of people making soap with vodka, so we are experimenting. But it's Russian-themed. It's, it's Russian-themed. It's based off my favorite, well, one of my favorite movies, Stalker, which is based off of the book Roadside Picnic, which is why we're going to call... The soap roadside picnic. Exactly. By the Str uh, Strugatsky brothers. Mm -hmm. Show us your mo the movie that we have. Oh, this was the last film that Andrea Tarkovsky made in the USSR, and the reason why it's so cryptic is because um, he was trying to get past censorship because the USSR was very, very big on censorship. It's got actually surprisingly a lot of Christian themes in it. It's a very interesting film, even though it's not really a Christian film. When people asked Andrea Tarkovsky what the film was about, because it's so cryptic, his response was it's about extraordinary faith. So that can be whatever you want it to mean. And I think that's the way he intended it to be. Yeah, it's very, very cryptic, but if you like art house films and if you're interested at all in Russian uh, cinematography, Stalker's a good one. Got a good boil going. Oh, we lost a lot. Didn't we? All right, Aaron, will you pour in how much vodka we have left? Dang. I still actually taste some of that alcohol, even for that little bit I put in my mouth. We lost almost exactly half. If that, that was. And that was from boiling it for only 30 minutes. So you want it back up to 20, 20 ounces, approximately. So we will have 20.6 20. 20. ounces. In the bucket, we've got olive oil, canola oil, and castor oil. Aaron's going to pour in our coconut oil, lard, and cocoa butter. 
Right there, that looks like an Andre Tarkovsky film, just right there. <laughs> yeah. So, just for English speakers, I know that the word stalker has negative connotations in English, but in Russian, a stalker means something completely different. And the Tarkovsky brothers actually invented the word stalker based off of one of their favorite books by Rudyard Kipling called Stalky and Company. And a stalker in Russia is basically someone who invades or interlopes into a zone or an area that's strictly off limits in order to either scavenge it or to find something in it in order to bring back to the real world. The word stalker in Russian is actually a made up word because of the book Roadside Picnic, which is what we're naming this soap. Most English speaking people know what the word Jedi is, even though Jedi was made up by George Lucas. So Stalker was made up by the Strigotsky brothers, but most Russians know what you're talking about when you say Stalker. In English, we usually think of Stalker as like, you know, someone who's creepy, someone who's stalking like a woman or something like that. But in Russian, it does not have that connotation. So Aaron's going to pour in the lye. I'm still stirring. So here is our vodka with a little water added to make up for the evaporation and just lie there's nothing extra so, i actually still smell a little bit of that alcohol i do too so we're gonna see uh what's going to happen we're going to add some clay some kaolin clay along with our fragrance what fragrance did we pick aaron uh rainforest rainforest this is clay and the fragrance And then we're going to separate our soap into four different buckets because we're doing four different colors. Whatever. Gold leaf. Gold is what leaf. It is. This is the color jade. Oh, that looks great on camera. Mm-hmm. Let's do gunmetal black next. Okay. And that's just because guns are a common theme in both Stalker and Roadside Picnic. I chose aquamarine, and the reason for that is because Tarkovsky loves to use water in his films. So aquamarine sounds very watery. Doesn't actually look too watery though, does it? Well, it looks like water that came out of a chemical factory. It does look like <laughs> And I'll try to get these other ones mixed in. This is actually behaving pretty well. From what I was reading on the internet about using harder liquor than beer, people are saying that it would accelerate, and so far we're doing pretty good. It's acting like normal soap. Here's a makeshift mold. I found this cool wooden box for free, a, in a free box. A free, a free box in a free box. We're making four pounds of soap. Okay, Aaron. Ready? Yep, I'm ready. Let's go with the monochrome first. You want to pour it? This is a lot of. Uh, this is this is perfect. I don't mind if it doesn't completely cover the top. To keep it from breaking through. You want to pour onto my spatula. So which color do you want next? Uh, we're going to go with green next since okay. that's like one of the first colors that shows up after the movie leaves monochrome. Aquamarine. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's go back to green, and okay. then I'd like to go to gold, and then gunmetal. Looks like we need to stir this a little bit. Mm-hmm. It's solidifying already. Mm-hmm. Looks like green slushy. It's literally just going to be a splash, just like right down the center, to represent the scene where Revelation is quoted in the middle of the film. This metal gun represents both the meat grinder section of the zone as well as guns. I hope that doesn't offend any of your ladies. <laughs> I don't think it will. Ooh. Doing good, Aaron. That's a professional pour right there. I'm going to bang it down after this pour, okay? Make sure there's no air bubbles. Okay, this is going to all go in now. Okay.
What are you doing next? Uh, more aquamarine because there is a lot of water towards the end of the movie. Do you want any kind of swirling with a stick? Like any kind of... Do you think it'll look better? Uh, it might look interesting, but um, this, is, this is going to look very nice. It's going to be more um, chunks of color. Even though I don't like the word chunks, I like what I think chunks Blobs? would look like more. No, uh, maybe Ch uh, compartmentalization. Sections of color. Zones. Zones. <laughs> Zones of color. There we go. <laughs> However you want it poured. I'm really excited to use this mold because I was I was excited when I saw it and I immediately thought of soap. And so. Okay, I'm not gonna going to save some of that. I'm going to save some, just a little bit of it, and then I'm going to switch. Can go on top. Yeah, the whole reason for journeying to the center of the zone is because in the book there's something called the Wish Granter, which is a golden sphere, but in the movie it's called the Room, and it's literally a room that whoever walks through the threshold is granted their heart's desire, their deepest desire, the essence of what torments them, and the meaning of life itself. Whoa. Yes. Whatever it is their heart's desire is, whether they know it consciously or subconsciously, that will be given to them in the zone. And then, and in the movie, neither, none of them want to go in because they don't want to... Experience what that actually is. Yeah. They don't know if that's for the best. Because there was a stalker before the main stalker who went by the code name Teacher and was later his name was changed to Porcupine because after entering the room... He was supposedly got infinite amount of wealth, but then later committed suicide. Mm. So they're like, well, what does this room actually do to you? It's very mysterious. Mm -hmm. To my knowledge, I don't have any Russian viewers. Oh. If I do, they're very silent. Well, it's probably because they watch Tarkovsky films. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Do you want it swirled like a bunch of squiggly swirls, or do you want it infinity swirls? Uh, infinity, because that sounds wiggler than squiggly. You done scraping that? <laughs> I get, okay, I must not have scraped enough. <laughs> I still see some I could get. <laughs> I've, I've long since given up on this, but I'm still good and mentally, but physically I'm pretending to scrape this. <laughs> well, you're still getting some. That's what I'd be doing. Yeah, like, out, like, okay. like a millimeter. Well, the yeah. millimeters matter. I forgot how to do an infinity swirl. Here we go. Anything about that? That looks way better. Okay. Actually, show me what a squiggly swirl looks like. So it looks like like a current, like a current in, in the river. Oh yeah. Yes, I prefer that much more. That swirl kind of reminds me of his other movie, Solaris. Which also is a film about getting your heart's desires. Aaron, you ready to cut open your custom made soap? I am totally ready to see what's inside this roadside picnic. Uh, that looks like a sunset or a rise. long bar. Here's what our first cut looks like, which is a pretty sweet looking in my opinion. Yeah. Okay, you want to cut the next one? Sure. Get more money worth. Well, I figure it'll probably shrink a little bit. This is sweet. It looks like, like the zone. I really like it. It looks like a landscape. Yeah. Cool. It looks like there's like mountains and like layers of land. That's what I see. What do you see? I see a river and I see grass and I see a beach. I like it. It's beautiful colors. You're going too fast or too slow? You're going perfect. I really like your color choices you made. Thank you. I'm a fan. How do you like the smell? It smells good. It smells nature-y. Mm -hmm. 
So of all of the, the three different media that are related to the soap you made, we've got the book, the movie, and the game, the video game. Which is your favorite and why? Um, probably the video game, just because it's, that's kind of where I got interested, that's the, that, that game is what got me interested in, in a Russian culture, specifically Ukrainian Russian border, like Chernobyl, Pripyat, mm -hmm. Minx. We also watched that little mini series called Chernobyl. That was a very, very sad. It was uh, sad, but it was also really educational. It was extremely educational. About the whole situation. You know, what do you think? Yeah, some Bob Ross going on. It seriously looks like there's a mountain in the background, and I don't know, it looks really cool. Russian mountains. Yeah, pro probably the game, and then it would be the movie, and then the book. Okay. Would be my order of my favorite, uh, what would you call it? Stalker slash roadside picnic slash Pripyat related material. This yellow at the bottom could be the road. Yes, it is. And a this is the roadside. This is a roadside picnic. Yeah, that works it's perfectly. It's super sweet looking. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the design you made. It's a roadside. It's picnic. nothing like I thought it was gonna look like. What do you think it was gonna look like? Which is why I love cutting soap, because it never turns out like I think it's going to. <laughs> I mean, you good you could say it is just zones of color, but yeah. I still see a picture. Right. Which I didn't expect to see a landscape in it at all. I wasn't expecting that. Well, when you look at the top of it with the swirls, it kind of looks like toxic sludge. So <laughs> that could go along yep. with the nuclear wasteland uh -huh. of Chernobyl. I love this little swirling in the top, like a storm almost. Yeah. An emission is about ready to happen. That's what's going on. Oh, really? <laughs> and then this is our final cut right here. From a distance, they kind of just look like camo. All right, Aaron. Well, this was a good time, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, thank you for giving me the opportunity to kind of like make some soap based off of some of my interests. Sure. Well. Next time you get another inspiration, just let me know. We'll make some more, okay? Sure. Thank you. Я вас очень прошу. Вы что, не понимаете? Если, если что-нибудь случится, я вас вытащу. А так, я вас очень прошу. Ну, в кого? 